ठीक है Now that you're here, we can begin. Yep. So welcome everyone out there in Zoom land and also here. This is the first regular meeting of the Danby Town Board for the month of July. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Evidently there's one, since I didn't know about. Software price quotes and firewall and office 365. Is that the lead? Yeah. There's a um, there's something here about software price quotes for firewall and office oh. 365. I don't have it yet. Okay. Um actually it was on the mail. There's the link to it here. The fire the firewall quote was um was sent to you, Catherine, I believe, um, and was presented along with a switch for Jack uh, a while back. Um, but I don't know that anything happened with it. Um, since then, Drew sent the Office 365 quote. Thanks, I don't, I didn't see anything. That's I was I looked again at four o'clock uh, in my printer. My, oh, there it is. Where? Not, uh, Where is it? It's on, in an email, I think. There's something. It's on the agenda. It's linked to the agenda right now. At four o'clock, it was linked to the agenda. Oh. So it's it, um, something for us to talk about at the end of business? Or would it be soon? Yep. Anything else? Okay. I'm sorry, David. Yeah. Um, I'll talk about my report, but if you'd be willing, I'd love if you could add scheduling a public hearing for a grant application at your next meeting. I didn't understand half of what you just Schedule said. Schedule hearing, public hearing on something. Like oh, grants. <laughs> try, try again. <laughs> oh. Uh, if we could add to business scheduling a public hearing for the next meeting. Yeah. About a grant application, maybe? On what? I'll be right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So far, <laughs> a grant application. I think I've heard that. Yes. So I'm working. I'll talk about it in my report, but a uh, public hearing on a grant application for next meeting. It's so lovely with that. It's worse tonight than. Well, none of the David microphone. The Janet wasn't that bad. Oh, I couldn't understand. I, mean, I didn't understand anything yeah. she said earlier. Oh. But it is hard for me to understand that. Because that speaker really is getting Anyway, I'm sorry. Okay. So the, it weren't behind. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, so those are two. Anything else? No. Okay. So much of the floor. Is there anyone who would like to address the board on any matter? Just looking to see whether we have anything. <laughs> Gary. Gary. Oh, it took me a while to get uh, unmuted. Uh, yeah. The first time I seen the agenda, didn't it say we were having a public hearing today? Not today. It Next. was changed. It, it was there originally, though, wasn't it? Uh, at the, for the last meeting, but the agenda that came out today and the one that was out yesterday um, noticed that it was noted that it was moved to next next meeting. So we moved to that. 
We moved it at the last meeting to the to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, what's what's that uh, what's that going to be about? Can you let it let me know on that? There's there's two public hearings next time. One is on the proposed local law to change the clerk from elected to appointed, and the other one is on the um, to implement the tax tax abatement for conservation easements. And then we're going to add a third. Now, on the on the uh, to change the uh, clerks to a uh, appointed rather than elected, uh, do we have to do that now? Because you're going to appoint one anyway. It sounds like we don't have to do it, but we're proposing to do it, and we'll decide next time whether we're going to do it. I mean, you, you have so many controversial subjects going on at the same time. It would seem like you'd lay off this for a while and wait another two years or a year and a half or a year even and bring it up down the road and get some of these other things solved. Okay, well, that's something that can be mentioned as a reason not to do it at the next, when, when we have the public hearing. All right. I Thanks. guess that's all I have for right now. All right. Uh, Rhonda. There you go. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Good, because I can't hear Catherine. Because she's too far from her mic. I haven't said hardly a word. <laughs> I still can't hear you. I mean, you're echoing in the room, but you're not coming through your mic. Right. I'm speaking right to it. Is it not on? No, it's not. I don't think it's on because it's echoing in the room. I'll try that. Can you hear me on this one? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one's bad. Okay, not that one. Thank you. You should have a test of these things before you begin. Well, we thought we did, obviously. There's no, the batteries are yeah. still charging. Get the well, wired one. We'll just we'll do, 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 grab a wired get one. the wired one, yeah. Why would work fine? Yeah. The reach one work. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have anything else that, that you wanted to say, Sandra, or is that substance of your comment? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're moving on to the agenda then. Oh, Ted raised his hand. Okay, Ted. There we go. Thank you. Um, I was aware that you had moved, because I attended the previous meeting, I was aware that you had moved the public hearings to the next meeting. So um, no, no problem there. Um, I... I I have said it before, but um, I am really disappointed about the, oh, what I think was the frankly political nature of your attempt to um, abolish the office of an elected town clerk. If you were to go over the minutes, well, the recordings of your previous meetings and listen to what you have to say, I think you would find yourselves to be, you might be disappointed in what you heard. Um, that's one thing. Second thing, I'd like to talk a little bit more about public relations. Um, there are two items. Um, oh, let's do let's do the personal one first. Uh, in this month's issue of the Danby Town Board News, uh, page 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 three, about the middle, there is a sentence in um, in David West's. Um, item, which reads, of course, there are always some naysayers, comma, one frequent town meeting attendee showed up to share their opinion that no development should ever happen any place in Danby. I was actually at that meeting. I don't recall, I could be wrong, but I don't recall anybody saying that. I do, however, recall D uh, D David asking a question of the form. So is there anything you would like not to see in the Hamlet or not happen in the Hamlet? 
To which I answered, I would like to not see too much infill. And David responded, in the whole town? I said, no, in the hamlet, because that's what we're here to talk about. This sort of distortion is really bad for public relations. Uh, identifying, well, there are only, not counting perhaps uh, Steve Courtright and Laura Shawley and a few other people, there are only two people who are, who are frequent attendees at town board meetings, and the other one brought my attention to this. I think it's really bad for you to call out members of the public. You are not, you have to be held to a higher standard than that. And speaking of standards, I also happen to occasionally see postings on Facebook in the Danby South Hill group. Um, and Joel, speaking obviously as an individual, but we must remember that there's a very thin line between individuals and public officials, particularly after our, our former president, you know, that former guy who used Twitter to make official announcements. And Joel made some misstatements on there. Uh, one was the procedure of what happens uh, when someone has withdrawn from a race. Um, and the second one had to do with a sort of a one-sided description of, it merely said that the town board is dissatisfied with the clerk, uh, omitting the other half of it, which is that the clerk is quite possibly, I won't speak for her and I'm not putting her on the spot here, but she's quite possibly dis dissatisfied with you. I think you have to be much more careful about your public relations and the image that you present to the public. If you can't be absolutely accurate in what you have to say, you should not say it at all. Thank you. Well, Ted, as you observed that the, uh, the misstatement was inadvertent. I, I, I did, did but, none, but nonetheless, it was made and and I and I acknowledge when you corrected me that I had got it wrong. So you know, I, ha I haven't I haven't seen that acknowledgement. Maybe Facebook hasn't showed it to me yet. I'm sorry. Okay, well, okay, that that certainly that certainly would have taken some of the heat out of what I had to say. But I think the point is still there. Thanks. Okay, um, Mauricio. Would you like to address the board? Hi, can you yeah. hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I think I'd, uh, I'd like to second what, uh, what uh, Ted had just said, uh, in a sense that uh, I was at a previous meeting and I did, from my understanding in the issue of, of uh, um, the town clerk being, uh, you know, not being in an elected position, I think that there seems to be some sort of a conflict there. And I just don't, I still don't understand why the move to move to, to, to have that be an appointed position. Uh, there seems to be kind of a rush to do that. And I really don't understand the, you know, the, some of the causes and maybe just because I'm, I'm relatively new, uh, but it's still kind of find that disturbing. From my, from my observation, it seemed like there seemed to be uh, kind of a hostile environment there. And I don't know entirely, you know, what's the cause of that or, or why, they wouldn't be a better way of resolving this issue uh, rather than just, you know, changing that position in the sense of, of how the person gets to hold that seat. Uh, I find that kind of disturbing, to be honest with you. Um, and there's a, probably a few other things that I think, uh, you know, we'll like to just address at a later time, but uh, uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, to the point of it being in kind of a rush, I think it was first mentioned back in April, uh, and we took us a while to think about whether we wanted to propose it. And it was like two, like two meetings before we decided let's propose it. And then we wanted to, and then the reason it's happening in, in the ninth, on the 19th was to make sure that everybody had an opportunity to see it, think about it in advance um, with the notice that was in the town news. So I don't think there's any kind of a rush to get it through. Um, and there will of course be an opportunity on the 19th for everybody who wants to, to comment on the matter. And uh, we have not committed to doing it, we do, but we do. We are. We have proposed doing it, and you know, for all kinds of reasons, that will come out you know, when the time comes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, then you already had your shot. Uh, I, I did, but I have read what you wrote on Facebook, and I would just like to say a sentence or two about it. Sentence or two, sure. 
Um, it is in fact uh, not what previous, you talked about the minutes and you, it, you are correct. It is in fact not what previous um, clerks have done, although some of uh, Carol Sapansky's were edging toward that. However, it is not at all unusual. One of my first uh, acquaintances with the way that minutes are kept at the county level was exactly what Janice is doing. And the, apparently it was presented at that time. Now, this was 10 years ago. Uh, it was presented as, well, that's just, we put in what is absolutely legally required. And you could refer to the Town Clerks Association and the New York State Association of Towns as to what is legally required if you, know, if you don't feel the law is uh, explicit enough. So, you know, again, it's that's, that's more it's than two sentences, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any correspondence, Janice? Nope. Okay. Um, I do have one announcement. The um, long uh, postponed signing of the conservation easement uh, that we approved a couple of months ago um, has been scheduled to be uh, consummated at the uh, before the next week's Conservation Advisory Council meeting. So anybody invited would like to come, uh, it'll be at 6.30 with the Carlsons and with Ann Hoffman. It sounded to me like they thought they were coming at seven. Right. I don't think so. Because, well, somebody I, should check. I'll check, but I mean, I um, because it's a Zoom meeting and because the Zoom meeting is announced, um, we think, we, you know, I talked to Jonathan, we ought to be, it ought to happen in advance of that. So do not, people on the on the Zoom call are not waiting right. for us to do the a half an hour for right. the meeting to get started. So. Sounded like Hoffman maybe thought it was going to be at seven. Yeah, we'll so have to check with Dan. Stop. I'll yeah. check with Dan. You know, it, it can be if it needs to be, but but the preference would be at yeah. 6.30. Okay. Uh, reports. We have the clerk's report in writing. Um, Janice, you might want to correct the uh, affidavit at the end, which talks about, I think it says June 4th or something, and it's a June report, so it has to be July. Yeah, okay, I'll do that right now. Um, and we have Steve's report. And David is here. Hmm. Hey folks. So we had a rare June in that there was no planning board or BZA meeting, yes. um, which was a reprieve. We're gonna make up for it this month in July with a door, what is it, a door buster of a <laughs> barnstormer of a planning board with three applications. No. Um, one of them is 2288 Danby Road. Um, which is near South DMB Road. And that's a solar farm proposal. So it'll be the first time we've seen that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a sketch plan review, but it's it'll be uh, the beginning of site plan review and subdivision review for that because they are planning to subdivide um, possibly four, four community scalers community solar scale systems. So as with Norbit, where they did three systems yeah. of five megawatts each, this one would be probably four systems of five megawatts each that would each plug in individually. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, a parcel on Nelson Road where they are hoping to um, do a cluster subdivision to create one new small lot out of a very large lot. So the rest would remain large and it would meet the 300 foot buffer requirement. Um, and then uh, in the rural two zone. Yeah. And um, 520 West King Road, uh, which will be an application for um, adding a second home and a home occupation on the lot. Um, this is at the corner of King Road and Sandbank or mm -hmm. Town Line. Um, at, um, planning Board or BZA? Planning Board. Planning board. Yeah. Um, so those are both, they'll be in one building, but those are both uses allowed by site plan review. And um, that's 
it'll basically be like a pole barn with an apartment in it, but it'll be a garage for their business of building tiny homes and an in-law apartment for, I believe, an in-law. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm working hard with our grant writer, uh, Choice Words, funded by the county. Um, we are working towards a CDBG multifamily rehab grant. So like our current uh, single family homeowner, low income um, rehab program where low income homeowners can have their homes repaired. Uh, this would allow for the repair of multifamily properties that are rented by low income um, householders. And I'm working on getting building up the list, we have to have a big waiting list for it. Um, we have Olivia's properties on it as a start, which is six units, which is a, a pretty good start, but we need yeah. some more. Not um, right many. But, um, you know, having a, I think that would make a, a good impact on the Hamlet. And the timing also works really well that I would, the grants due in early August, so I would finish it before I leave and it wouldn't be left on the plate for the next planner. Thank you. Um, if that doesn't work out, there is a we could do Restore New York again, which is what we did and didn't receive. But I just had a meeting with um, New York State that went very well, and they laid out some things we could do to improve that proposal and make it more successful next time, um, including just talking to them because they really like it when applicants talk to them. Um, and they'd be happy to review. So we'll see if we can get um, enough of a wait list to make the CDBG program. Um, again, that would be good, both because it's a good program and also because we could get it kind of off the plate early in the year. Otherwise, um, you may still consider with your next planner work pursuing a restore New York in the fall is when that would come. Um, we are nearing the end of the Hamlet septic study. Uh, we have an advanced draft we're providing some comments on and we should in the next couple of weeks have a draft to give to you all and to be visible by the public of some options, some different ways that infrastructure could be provided uh, as well as kind of what those different things could cost. And we're looking at the whole range from just the possibility of kind of clustering on small lots, individual systems that the town could uh, take ownership of in a district, a floating district, something Joel's talked about for a while, up to having a very small area that has some kind of septic sewer system or looking at either of the hamlets in their entirety and kind of how each of those breaks down in terms of technology and cost and grants that are available and feasibility. Um, the Norbert Solar Farm is planning on starting clearing work soon. Uh, they need to put in place their erosion controls and get those inspected before they can do anything, but that's kind of the next step. And they've been kind of sitting on it and quiet, uh, working on their um, pilot with the county and other financing things. Uh, they said that their current plan would be to start the clearing and the prepping of the site this year and do actual installation in the spring of next year. Um, and then the last of the paperwork setting up the stormwater district is complete. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> and I'm here if you have any other questions. You have a BZA? There's not gonna be a BZA this month. Yeah, no applications. Yeah. Thanks. Minutes. Thanks, Liz. There are no minutes here on the agenda. I know we don't do them unless they're on the agenda. So we well, can go minutes, to the warrants. Minutes are there to dealt with not, three, three. No specific minutes are there. And no links to any specific minutes are there, and they should be there if we're done on Adam meeting. So let's go to the warrants. Anybody else okay with that? Well, I mean, I went through, I went through the two batches that yeah. we had, um, and just and picked out and sent out an email with my suggested. Um, oh, you couldn't open it, right? Um, okay. 
It wasn't that I couldn't open it. I can't print it because the internet, um, when the uh, internet went down, my printer stopped talking. Thank you. So there were there were some there were some things that um and I highlighted the things that I thought should really get changed. And most of them had to do with probably typos, mm -hmm. uh, resolution numbers that were messed up or um but um and I I removed anything that was well most almost and everything that was like my opinion. <laughs> um but I did there was um February twenty third um I thought um looked okay and I'd be willing to move that we approve February twenty third meeting minutes. Just find my list. I had a list too. The 23rd. You're, you're okay with Yeah. So am I. So you want to move approval balance? I moved it. Okay. I'll probably have a second. It. Okay. Any uh, discussion about it? That sounds good to me. Okay. Do that. Yes. I'm going to do them one at a time. Hmm? I'm going to do them one at a time. That's um that that was the only that was the one the that I one saw that was okay that um yeah. was okay as it was. Yeah. Um. All right. And and what what we could do is you know at our next meeting either um um hopefully you know the resolution numbers. Things would be fixed. Yeah. And, um, uh, I asked Janice if she had time, and that's what I'm not sure we did, to look at your uh, you know, proposed changes. I don't know what time I sent them out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, did you have a chance to look at them, Janice? I did. Um, the The attachments you did, Leslie, are the same document, though, so I can only see your comments for the minutes from December 21st, January, and February. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, the you attached the same document to your email, so both documents you attached are feedback for December, January, and February minutes. Correct. Yes. You said that you did two batches, and well, the other so was March, March through May. Yeah, but what you attached to your email was the, both documents were the oh, same okay. document. Oh, that's a weird. That was well, um, probably inadvertent, but that's yeah. What, if that's what Chance had a chance to look. Oh, at. okay. Um, so uh, I'll vote? make sure the right ones were sent out. You're gonna vote now. You only you only got one. Yeah. Huh. Well, let's do uh, the twenty three February, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that one right now and talk about what we can do anymore. Yeah. So with the vote, if you will. Uh, Connors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Ganyon. Yes. So it's the March. So the, the March that we, May didn't get. Right. So, so the ones you actually saw were the ones that were, um, which ones were they anyway? I forget because I. The De December 21, January 3rd. January 17th, February 7th, and February 23rd. That, that was what in your that was what we got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the other was the, the other batch was March 22nd, April 4th, yeah. April. Which is the batch we thought we were dealing with then. March through May. Except the seventh of March, which we approved last time. They'd throw us at him. Take is a time guess. So the stuff I take tonight is not going to help the immediate. So I'll I'll send those back out. You want these? You want copies of them? Uh, yeah, then I don't have to print. This is the same thing as in your attachment, isn't it? It's well, it sounds like just one. Yeah, she's actually. Oh, 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 that's yes, right. Two. And this has got both sets. Yeah, yeah. So you want to wait on both of them? Yep. Yeah. All right. 
You want to have a meeting on the 19th. Well, most likely we won't get everything done again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that brings us to the warrant. Well, let's, um, I'll move. <laughs> I'll move the highway um, abstract um, vouchers 134 through 139 for $57,739.88. So 139, not 138. Hmm? 139, not 138. I thought I said 139. You did. So 138 was what on your, it was on the agenda when I printed it. Yeah, well, um, the truck got added. Yeah. Yeah, but the, but the total on it, I'm interesting, the total on the agenda is correct, but the- but Oh, you talk, oh, you're looking at the agenda. agenda. Uh, the agenda is four, didn't have it on there. Right, it didn't, on I look. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, 134, 139, and 57, 7388. Yeah. Second. Any discussion? Okay, Jan. Um, oops, hang on. Uh, Connors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Daniel. Yes. Um, I'll move the, the water abstract voucher. Voucher. 20 <laughs> for $70. Second. Ready? Vote, please. Connors. Yes. Hunter. <clears throat> yes. Woodworth. Yes. Canyon. Yes. Um, I don't know if it got changed from when I printed it off, but um, well, the general fund a voucher 213. Um, on the abstract, it says 594.15, and on the voucher, it says 831.35. I think Jan yeah, said she fixed that, but I'm not sure how it got fixed. It was uh, the total, the total. Not yeah, right. I, the total I, I can wrong. Think of it right. if you would like to hear. I'm um, saying I can speak to this if you would like to hear. Yeah. Okay. So Pat corrected the, um, uh, there was a credit on one of the invoices that had been corrected uh, when Leslie took a look at it. And then Laura noted that um, all of those invoices, except for the New York State inspection invoice, uh, should go to highway. So all of them have been removed, except for the one invoice that's for a state inspection of $20. So did it get added to the highway? No. Laura is going to add it to the next abstract. Okay. Yeah, you want to speak to that, Laura? Yes. Yeah, with their hand up, they're waving at us. Am I, am I on now? Yeah. Oh, okay, actually, there was a couple of them on there um, that appeared on there that had already been paid. Um, so we are, I'm, I'm just looking into that. And as Janice said, that the, the rest of that breakdown will appear at the next, on the next abstract. And I've been in contact with Alliance One on a couple of the issues that were on that bill. So the $20 on this is perfect. So the total for 213 through 222 includes the corrections to the Caskies Alliance One voucher 213 with a total of $20, which brings the total claims to $11,920.03. Yeah, 
only is twenty dollars. The rest are not there. Right. So right. the that, the rest would be subtracted. Right. Yes. Which um, brings the total to what if you did a math correctly, which probably did eleven thousand nine twenty oh three. So we're subtracting five hundred and seventy four dollars and fifteen cents from the total. The previous total. Um, no, you're subtracting more than that. All for twenty, whatever that is. Yeah, everything for twenty dollars. So it's. Uh, so what's the new total? Eight hundred and eleven. You're subtracting eight hundred and eleven thirty-five. We're subtracting five hundred and seventy-four and fifteen oh. cents. Okay. Right. Depends on what you're. <laughs> Which when you this? printed it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, everything but the twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. what's the new total for the $11,920 and three cents. Okay, so the rest, um, and the only other thing I had, um, was voucher 221, um, the account numbers are uh, need to be correct. And they're not now. Well, they're all they're all bunched into one num one um, one account number, and there were you know code was in there, highway was in there, the planner was in there, so and they're separate account numbers. Mm -hmm. so I don't know we have been that. doing those as the the wireless mobile phones, which should be 1650.42 to contrast with the Mitel phones townwide that are 1650.4 something else. I'm not sure. So this is the first this is the first this is the first abstract where they aren't separated out. They should have been. So code doesn't um it doesn't highway it's all it's all under one account. A one six five zero. Right yeah, there. when Laura Laura and I had spoken about collapsing the the phone lines because the phone lines are town wide across mm -hmm. town hall and highway and water district, so yeah, it means it may have the wireless also be collapsed. Okay, it would be helpful to have information like that. Um, when something major is changing. <laughs> I mean, the account line says Verizon wireless phone lines, so I don't don't know how much clearer it could be. This is the first time that the, all the phones are under one account number. I don't think right? it's the first time. I think it has been before, the but first time I, I, just, have, I, looked, I don't want to talk. I have that. mistakenly not put them on, but I believe there was another one. That's it. Uh, towards the oh, beginning wow. of the year. Mm -hmm. That's a detail I hadn't noticed. Yeah, I do remember now they were separated out with different numbers. Yeah. 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 I, I looked back. Yeah. But they're okay under the one umbrella, given that it now, you know, if we have a central number um, that you can call and get directed to. Makes sense. It used to be all individual lines, mm -hmm. the relic of times past. I assume that was changed years ago. Well, time. not that long ago. Not last month? Last year. Yeah. But, the, but, the, but the, the practice didn't change correspondingly. We, we still had it broken out instead of having it together. And when was that decision made? Evidently, this month. This is the first time you say that it's all into one instead of separated out. Okay. Yeah. So, it's actually if you look at I'm abstract gonna... at abstract number three, abstract number three shows the Verizon wireless for 1860 or sorry, 1860, A1650.4 mobile phones. And it was all under one. Hmm. So abstract three was like that. So we've been back and forth on it. Yes, sir. Um, I, I'll move the general fund vouchers, uh, well, the revised voucher 213 through 
222 for $11,920 and three cents. Second. Ready to vote? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Connors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Daniel. Yes. Okay. Uh, we talked a bit last time in our special meeting about the need to set up a search committee for the planner. Uh, the last time we had a search committee, it consisted of uh, another member of the town board, Matt Ulensky, me, Laura, uh, and I can't remember whether it was, a, whether it was probably with John Szymanski, who was in the room after Jason left. Mm -hmm. um, so this time, it may, I think it, we talked about this last time and agreed that the same composition would make sense. Um, but this time, David could be the the staff person and then the board agreed last time that it would be good to have another town board member and um, the board's okay with it. I think Leslie's one of the most experienced and would be good to have on that group. Leslie willing. <laughs> I, she said she would and I talked to her earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I propose that we have that the search committee consist of what people just named, they, me, David, Laura, and Leslie. And the process, as we already said in the report, is that we, um, we're trying to get people, the deadline for submissions is the 10th. Um, and then the, the committee will review the, the submitted uh, applications and decide which ones uh, should be interviewed. And then on the basis of the interviews, decide whether we need further process. Uh, last time we couldn't do it because we were in the middle of COVID, but the previous time we was a, it was a close race, so to speak, among three potential candidates. And we had a, a, an additional step in the process where Town Board, Planning Board, and I think BZA were all invited to an opportunity for the, each of the candidates to present. So we had some idea of their ability to, to you know, mm -hmm. act in public right. speaking role. So if it comes to that, then we, 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 we could have that extra step. On the other hand, it could be like last time, where there's like a standout candidate, and it, then, then we could go straight to a recommendation. I'd like to stick in there, check references um, somewhere. Yeah. Part of the process. So let's see. So I moved that that be the committee because we haven't done a vote yet. Second it. More discussion. Janice? Connors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Ganyon. Yes. Uh, the wish list. Want to spend a little time on it? I guess you we want it. The wish list. Oh. Um, I think we need to make sure that the things we already talked about and put on the top get done. One of those was the uh, solar rays coming up soon, is whether we're supposed to buy them or not. Well, I thought it was, didn't we just, didn't we determine it a couple of years out yet? We need plenty of time to work on it and budget for it if we need it. I don't think it's a long time out. Yeah, there's a question why we, we had options with it. I think Laura Brown reported, you know, we could, we could buy it. We could continue to rent it. Or we could opt out altogether. I think there's three options. And then we need to decide on those three options. And we need to look at the costs of those options to see which is better for the town. I'm perfectly happy to look at that with um, with Paul Hansen because he's been working on it for the no, last true. Is it true? Years. Yeah. Well, that would, that could be the next step. Yeah. Yes, that'll be the next step. <laughs> okay, so why don't we make a note of that? Um, Pat, and, Pat and Paul. Um, 
of the option. Laura, do you remember what the, um, I'm sure Laura is not still awake. <laughs> yeah, you are, okay. Um, do you remember what the, when the uh, contract period ended? Go ahead. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think it was, um, I think that the time frame was three years. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me right now. I wasn't thinking that this part would come up, but I can uh, put together a little report and send it out to everyone. Matter of fact, I think I might have done that already, but um, it's within, I think it's within three years. Um, I believe the dollar amount was around $75,000. Um, we have something like 35, just don't, don't quote me on these. I'm just kind of trying to go from memory here. I believe we have like 35,000 in a reserve now for it. Um, but there, like, like Joel was saying, there are options. There are different options that we can look at. We can look at doing this within three years, doing it within like another five years, um, eight years. So there's there's some options to it. And I will take, uh, I'll scan that part of the contract. So everybody at least has some information in front of them for when we meet again, when we meet next time. Do you want to talk about it? And I'll try to get in contact with Paul Hansen again. Um, and see, well, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea when we're going to talk about it, but maybe he could uh, zoom in. Right. Um, it, and you know, Pat just suggested that she and Paul get together. I think maybe make you, Pat, I ought to add Laura to the, to the, to the confab. I'll contact uh, Paul and then see if we can't make arrangements to get together with you. That'll be quicker. Oh, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. That would be great because we do have the contract. So, um, right. right. We, need, we can take a look at it and see, and, and it'll be, it'll be clearer when we take, when you take a look at it. <laughs> I thought I'd send that out, but I think I may have explained it in an email. No, I don't remember. Getting, I remember you talking about doing it, but I don't remember getting it. I think I sent it out in one report with several different items on the report. I'll look. I'll look for it again and send it out. Okay. Capable, I might have missed it. Okay. So this is. But yes, I'm glad you brought that up because that's going to come come about, as we all know, three years goes by pretty quick. Yeah, and we should be planning for. Well, you know, the 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 uh, the driver here, in a sense, is that we have to decide what we're going to use our ARPA funding for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we only have we have two years to decide, basically. Yeah. Um, we're into year two. <laughs> I don't know. I think I attached it to something that I had reported to you guys about the salt shed. And it was the salt shed too that we had, you know, it was Keith yeah. anticipated that that would last, you know, at least another five to eight years. So we have plenty of time. At... Yes, we did. We did talk about that. I mean, you're saying that there was a 15 to 20 year life. We still got five or more years left of it. And that we could use chip money when the time comes. If so that we... was sort of We've got some in the we've got some in a reserve now, and even just a little bit each year will bring us to where we need to be. Yeah, so that's what we did. We dealt with that. I'm not sure when, but that's what my notes say about that one. Mm -hmm. No, we can check off complete creation of South Point development drainage district. That one. Thank you, David. Um, It's under other, it's other. the second Oh, page. yes, right, right. That one's done. It to be implemented yet, but it's done. Yeah. It creates. Just create, yeah. The broadband question is uh, we're sort of waiting on what the county's going to do, basically. Now, 
Dan reported, or I saw it in the minutes, no, more than a minute, that's actually in a newspaper, that the legislature decided not to uh, investigate a countywide fiber network. And I, would, I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding that we necessarily would ask that, that they do that, but, but I was hoping that we would get some investigation of whether or not the extension of service, which they're going to get an RFP for, to but those who don't have it, could be done in a way that would um, not be a total giveaway of, of public money. That, that maybe this, the, 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 the fiber that's installed or the cable that's installed, depending on which um, would be, we would still have the county, the county or whoever would have some of it, of it a stake in it, um, one way or another. But the, the, the you know the options for doing that is, is, is something I thought should be explored because if we were to go with, uh, you know, at some later point, a uh, Maybe adding on to, or you know, piggybacking on what Dryden is currently doing, and Caroline is moving to also do, which is to, which is to do a municipal fiber network. Um, the most expensive part of that is the part that is currently missing. You know, the the the, the long lines to you know, how far out places, and to spend the public money now to extend the lines to those people, and then do it again with public money um, seems like a poor investment if it can be avoided because it would it would it would be a considerable savings to the ultimate system if we could put the work fibers put them in put them in let them use them until we can connect to them and then made it part of a you know a larger network but um, but that's not what they're asking for I don't think in their request for proposals um, and what we were told was Let's see what we get back by way of proposal. And certainly, if you're um, if you're a spectrum or if you're a point broadband, um, you'll be willing to extend the wires or the wires for one price if you own them when you get done, and for a different price if you are doing it but you don't own them when you get done. And one of the possibilities, um, and, and Dryden said they might do something like this, is be one of the proposers and say, well, we'll put in the fiber for X amount. Um, but that, I don't see how that interfaces with what the county is looking to do. Probably not. So where does that leave us? <laughs> That's the question. Certainly the most expedient thing to do is what um, we're, County is poised to do, which is to simply pay the closest provider to extend their line to the people who are not, not yet connected. Um, I mean, were we just waiting for the county, or were some of these companies did were they asked to to like, hey, what can you do for us? Not, no, oh. although um, Chuck Bajash. Bartosz, Bartosz. Yeah. After he did the survey for Danby, um, said, you know, the next thing would be, you know, if you want it, um, I could give you, an, I, I could give you estimates for what it would cost me to extend service to those, you know, for off of my network. Right. Um, and but I didn't follow up because we were kind of waiting on the counties. Well, it might be worth checking on that. I mean, I'm just looking at how um, we got hardwired. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the town and the town certainly didn't pay for it, but he was able to somehow get wire to a neighborhood. Um, you know, so some people, you know, it, it, the cost depended on how far you were away from the road, um, but it wasn't unreasonable. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't something the town paid for. So, I mean, can he, are there other neighborhoods 
that aren't hardwired that he could do the same thing with? Well, um, I mean, I think it just for him, it's a number, you know, I mean, how yeah, many? Right. Um, uh, well, where we are with it, with the, with the um, coverage is there's very little overlap among providers. So they tend not to duplicate each other's territory. Right. You know, they don't want to jump over somebody. Right, exactly. So yeah. I mean, where we where we're so we could ask. Yeah. Chalk and this other company. The other spectrum mostly. Spectrum, and then there's um, help uh, starts with the H. The one that uh, South the Healthy. Oh, Hayley. Hayley. Yeah. Can Can we not ask them? Are there is there any way that you could you know, is how many good? households do you need to be able to extend the wire um, down any any road um, in Danby? Yeah, because we spent 20 years trying to get Spectrum to do that with, um, without well, success. Spectrum, yeah. I, you know. So um, where, where we are now is you know, the county is poised to, I think, to get proposals. Well, for. we can wait until we're blue in the face for the county. I, and we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah. But... If if we just ask, I mean, um, you know, I think our neighborhood got wired in just because somebody kept bugging him. Yeah. Um, and it was like, yeah, okay, for two hundred dollars, we'll hook individual houses up. Two hundred dollars wasn't a lot. That's not. No. No. Um, no. If you're close to the road. <laughs> yeah, close to the road right? But um, I, you know, I just, I just. Find it hard to believe that there aren't other pockets that couldn't be taken care of um, well, in that, that same way, and it wouldn't yeah. cost the town anything. Yeah. But it may, you know, help if the town is saying, "What right. can you do?" Right. Um, instead of having individuals. Um, yeah. Well, we're. we're, we're uh, I think it's safe to say we're not asking individuals to, to do it, uh, and we could ask Chuck. I mean, he is the one. He and, and he both both Chuck and whoever, whoever Hayley's with, you know, they're pretty good about about wanting to extend their service as opposed to you know the twenty years or more of, right. of foot dragging we've gotten out of right. spectrum. Okay, well maybe now we can say what you know. Yeah, we're a little tired of waiting for something to happen. We could, what we could, could you do? See, but my impression is that the well the RFP either, either has gone out or is about to go out. For the for the county, I'm not sure what the reply by is, but it's we're not talking months now. And if you know, I think all of the providers are probably they know this is coming, uh, and they're um, anticipating, you know, basically bidding on on you know on extending the lines and having it be subsidized in in in, in part. So. I don't think they'll volunteer to do it without subsidy, but we could subsidize too. Well, our neighborhood didn't. I mean, we just I know you did. Yeah. So I mean. Yeah. Well, that was then. This is now. Wasn't that long ago? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I know. It, I can if, bother if, if you if you'd like to call, I can talk by all means. I um I don't know the other people. No, but Rhonda could probably tell you because she's got eight weeks. I know that Steve Seeland told uh, told a couple of us that Spectrum was around asking them if they wanted because mm -hmm. he said it, it's recent. I mean, this is this year because uh, I don't know exactly what the, the cable already there, isn't it? Right? Well, they were asking for that's part of what you just said. Some of the cable things are in different neighborhoods. Wherever Spectrum is, yeah. people who might be in the line for it. They were looking for they he asked he said that it was as though they were looking for customers. Mm -hmm. And Steve had a phone number and a card, which he has looked for a few times. I mean, I don't mind calling him and saying that I'm on the town board for Danby and seeing, you know, if I can get anywhere with Spectrum. But I mean it's the same thing. It's the same as doing it for each of the other providers, you know. So I mean, I don't mind calling, you but I'll call them. Yeah. And I'll try again. I'll check with Steve again. See if he found that contact. Yeah. Catherine's going to call. 
um, and Leslie's going to call um, HR. Point broadband. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who to contact, but hey, please, I can't do that hard to find for them. Anyone mm. mm. do them? Yeah. If I get a contact and I call one and then say I'm calling the other, I'll call both of them and say I'm calling each of you. And yep. this is, you know, like <laughs> get somebody better start doing something. They'll try. Who, which one of you is going to step up? But I don't have any idea even how to spell that word. So, H A E L E. H A E, right? H A E S E L E. All right. Something like that. Okay. And it's an internet provider. Yep. Um, that's your way. Oh, Does anybody know, um, you know, which lines? I mean, I know that uh, a lot of the lines are owned by Spectrum. Yeah, not those. Different companies. Are... Different company, yeah. Okay. Spectrum is cable. Yeah. The others are, at this point, um, fiber optic. Oh, they are? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Point broadband was specifically set up to do fiber optics. Yeah. I know when it came in Virginia. Without he was doing just wireless stuff with his towers and stuff that didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we didn't hurt it. Yeah. I heard a word again. So, okay. It moved um, in the direction of fiber. Yeah. Okay. Too many trees, too many hills. Um, right, exactly. I, I mean, under. Their town government needs. I don't know. I've always been. Um, I thought it was on here, but um, you know, thinking about. I mean, the the noise. You know, do we want to add that to the list? No, do you know, dealing with noise options for um, dealing with complaints, um, well, short term rental, yeah. um, and and the one that I. Um, that I know was brought up before CJ left was um, site plan review for ag development. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that I don't want to lose that. Only been a couple years. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're talking about on the on the list. Going to happen. Huh? Yeah. You're talking about on the wish list. Yeah. Yeah. What are you, what are you talking about? When when we say site plan review for ag. Development, what kind of development? Well, I mean, it came up. I mean, some of that issue did come up with the uh, Howland Road problem. I mean, not not yeah. that you can, you know, say no to ag development, but you can you can say there needs to be site plan reviews so that you, you know can the fire trucks get in there and turn around? Can yes. you know? Yeah, but you, if, if that, no. um, no, you're, so you're, uh, the neighbors. Yeah, yeah you're, you're triggering my memory. The the uh, there was some uh, indication from Ag and Marcus that reasonable site plan review was something that they yeah. would they would. Well, it was one of the things I think CJ called it a low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, with the 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 audit that she, that she helped do, mm -hmm. uh, that was like top on the list at that time. Uh, there were things that came up. Mm -hmm. Why don't we add that to the other list? What was the other thing you mentioned? Well, the short term oh, rental and noise. I mean, yeah. those are things well, that were projects that are getting worked on. Yeah. So we talked about, well, I mean, it, uh, it was a recommendation some time ago. We ought to codify our laws. Um, it would make it easier to find things, but it's an, it's an, it's an expensive thing to write to well, it's expensive. I mean, Sarah and I looked at that, and at the time, we mm -hmm. thought, forget it. <laughs> well, that, that prompted Sarah's effort to um, make a list, and she did. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you know what's out there already 
it was a good list, the Envy Laws list. Uh -huh. um, but it had to be, you know, all these things had to be put someplace and then maintained. Right. You know, kept up to date. Right. Which, if we're going to commit to doing it, you know, we could we could invest the staff resources into getting it done. Um, you know, we have to plan accordingly. We could we could add money to the budget to to make an effort to do that, um, either hiring staff or rather than having a consultant take uh -huh. a consultant to do it. Yeah. Well, I think it should be part of. It. Maybe it's dreaming, but I think that. Seems like a very logical thing for a town to do, yeah. and to have it part of a job, so that whenever there is one, a law, mm -hmm. it doesn't get backed up with, right. you know, it should be fairly straightforward. But again, right. that's my maybe my ignorance. No, no, I'm not think so. You know, a larger sense because I mean, I think we looked at I think term Ulysses was modifying at the time and that just looking at their system it, maybe they've it's gotten better in the you know years that have occurred um but i it was besides the cost it was it, it wasn't all that easy to use and it it, it you know it you know the town of ithaca some uh, big huge places probably have to have something like that um, but it does tend to be larger towns that go through the official yeah. codification. Yeah. Yeah. What What is the book involved? It's a It's a basically a program, and I forget how much it costs at the time we were looking at it. It's a lot of money. Wow. And and it, you just have to submit every time. You know, something's changed or a new law is added. Um, it it ends up on a in a format that's supposed to be easy to get to and Did you want to kept up, up to date. Yeah, sure. <laughs> David's a proponent, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think there's two things with codification. At its most basic level codification could mean having all of the laws in a book that you adopt as the town code that anyone knows there's one document and whenever you edit it, whenever you adopt a new law, it gets edited and put in and that could be codified in paper. And I think some of Sarah's work started doing that. I will say I have found new laws this month after working for the town for two years that I didn't know existed. And that's a problem you're going to keep having if there isn't a town code. Right. That's where the codification comes from. It's adopting a code that is the complete compendium of all of the town laws. And it's all in one place and it has the table of contents and anyone who wants to know what the laws are can go to it and find them all. Um, so, but the, the other side of that is there are companies that make a website, they have a website system that that um, is accessed through and some of the convenient things about that is that you can search it um, online. Ulysses does have it. The city and town of Ithaca have it. Um, I don't think that Lansing does. Um, but they, the thing that comes with that is that not only do you have all of your things compiled in one place, they also provide feedback like this conflicts with that one or the way that you're doing this particular kind of thing has been, you know, struck down in court already. So you should think about, you know, a better way to do whatever, you know, dog law or whatever it is that you have. They deal with the laws of towns all over the state and all over the country and know the things that have changed because the laws are always changing with case laws, things come up. So you also have someone's eyes on it with that mm -hmm. kind of lens of what things aren't working, what things are working. Um, it is expensive, especially at first. Um, I, Liz was totally right to mention Ulysses. You know, I did some work for Ulysses and they were tentative to pass a new law because, or they would save up three or four laws because mm -hmm. to, you know, pay for an edit because there's a price per edit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's not nothing. And I think upfront, you're probably talking ten, fifteen thousand dollars for the initial. Anything higher? Mm -hmm. 
um, that's what you know it's been a while since i looked at the yeah. dollars of it but yeah um it's significant but you know compared to a lawsuit because you know, say, yeah. compared to a lawsuit yeah yeah um, but, but even at the very least i would strongly 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 encourage paper codification and adoption as a code and one of the things we did when we adopted the zoning update a year ago is that we repealed all zoning and replaced it because there was some history of you know we don't know exactly did all of the changes make it forward into yes. a document and it's good to every once in a while with a code you can do that even annually um, repeal and replace the entire code and then you know that what you have there's no question of is that the law or isn't it the law? It's you know they you have eyes know. on it. Yeah, yeah. So do they? Um, does such a company also replace? I mean, maybe an alternate calling the town attorney every time we want to check a law. Just curious. I don't know. No. When we're talking about money, but yeah. Okay. I wouldn't think so. Well, if they've been, if they, if there's a um, knowledge about what laws have already been struck down, et cetera, et cetera, before we ever get to the point of. Yeah, but I mean, that would be a prompt for us to do something about it. But then I think we probably work with attorneys to make whatever changes are needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think that you could like call yeah. general code when you're, you know, wondering about it. But you can, you can look to them for, you know, examples of okay. blah 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 laws or yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they also make it easy to search. You can search other towns. Right. You can search within their database of laws for all the laws about short-term rental or mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, essentially it's a subscription service? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's an upfront cost yeah. of the work of Spotify. compiling everything into a code. And then there's an ongoing yeah. maintenance cost that I believe there's some kind of flat fee. And then every time you adopt a new law and you want them to go in and change the code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why, you know, like Ulysses was saying, like we save up three or four months worth of laws and send them all at once, yeah. um, which is still better than not knowing what laws were passed or you know missing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's my two cents. Thanks, David. So having a, starting with paper, would be a good thing no matter what with the staff a staff well no, uh, whether, staff whether it's paper or electronic you know creating creating a a, a record um which Sarah well, Sarah started to do so did Leslie oh, did it for years yeah, yeah. yeah between between your efforts and Sarah's efforts I thought we had a pretty good yeah. you know, basis so I think the hang-up we got into was you know how do we create a record that people can access that's up to date um, so it has to be kept up, right? Uh, and then, you know, well, we have to get, you get have you have to, to sort of get rid of the old stuff, you know? right? Well, I mean, you don't want to you want to get rid of it because it's part oh, of the you record, get it. Well, which, you but you need it where there's access, right? To the, right, I mean, or yeah, or you can look it up if you need to, but but there ought to be, you know, here's where you look for what's current, right? Um, and it, we started to set that up, but you know, there, it takes a considerable effort to you know get it. Done and um, and then and then maintained it, which may mean you know either either more more, more staff support to do it because some of these things aren't happening. Um, it's it's part of records management. I, I was going to say it sounds like that, and yeah. it all sounds like historian too, but maybe um, and when and paper is a not the word required necessarily paper does not mean exclude our own use of a computer it, it right. just no no, means, no. Yeah. So, having it in hard copy as well right. as in electronic yeah. it it's, makes it hard to update because it's on paper you have to you know, pull and replace but right mm -hmm. put them in order in the first place find yeah. everyone we have and put them in some kind of date order yeah, yeah. date order number order a number but I didn't find the most recent 
I think Sarah's, I think, was topical, which doesn't make sense. Huh? Sarah's was sort of topical. Um, I don't know. I mean, the initial codification should just be in order. It can when save you, it you again. set up a system <laughs> to access it, you, you, do it, it. So, you do it by that afterwards. Yeah. The way a, a code is usually set up is there are different sections and like zoning would be one section. Right. And so I believe in the city of Ithaca zoning is like the 500s. And there's a different section where you would find the subdivision rules and there's a different section where you would find the dog rules and, you know, kind of general. Right. Yeah, that's what I think was about topical. Yeah. yeah. So the, I think that's one of the important parts is that there's a table of contents that you can find you can look through a table of contents and see what what even are all the laws that are adopted. Because that's the hard part is if you don't know what to look for, yeah. if you don't know that there's a law on a particular topic. Yeah. You know, looking by the right. years isn't terribly <laughs> yeah. yeah, just having a chronological record isn't very helpful. I have a separate yeah. it's, it's topical too. Yeah. Yeah, right, which kind of way of said it too. But there are different spans and yeah. in different times. Uh, Sarah started current and went backwards or something like that. I can't remember what she said, but I did see that. It is accessible, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Sarah made a database. That's right. So it's a database. Yeah, you can sort it different ways and it's linked to. Um, but it's linked to each individual law is a different link. So you can't search all of DMV's laws for, you know, septic systems or something like that for her fence height. Um, whereas if you had a code where it was one document, if you want, you had a question about anything, is there a law about um, Put in a topic of interest? Yeah, you could you can search it as a PDF or a website or whatever it is. Fence height. Yeah, and then you might find that there's three different laws that mention that, and they all say different things. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Is there a list of those kinds of companies around? Yeah, there aren't a lot of them. Um, those the general general code is what basically everyone around here uses for the online. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm sure there are, I'm sure they have competitors, um, but they're kind of the, you know, Microsoft of that space. E-code. E-code. Well, if this was a, if this, if this were a priority, we could, we could, We'll just put it on the list. Okay, budget. Is it on the budget? list? It's on the list. Okay. But um, well, you know, this is you know, this is our list of things. Uh, and the question is, what do we need to do to we, we both prioritize and also what are the steps associated with the action on, on any one of them? So um, we, we went through, I think the first pass is sort of pull out what we thought the most important things were. Um, and 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 this is follow up to some of that stuff. What, do we, what are we going to do about mm. these things? For instance, you're renumbering the future and Heller Road is something that's supposed to be happening. But um. Well, it didn't. I remember when it happened for Marsh, but I don't remember. I thought the fire department was uh, was heavily involved with that. I don't remember that, but I mean, I, um, Steve and I have been um, back <coughs> with the, the thing about renumbering. Um, Future Hollow Road is that it is both in town of Caroline and in the town of Danby. So we need to get it, we, I mean, we need to basically collaborate on, on the renumbering. Although one of the proposals coming out of the, um, the, the code study that the county did is that the county would take over the numbering um, of, of dwellings. And it's not clear whether they would take over the, the uh, renumbering. renumbering. Um, as opposed to just assigning, assigning numbers where somebody create or who wants to put up a house. Um, but um, we've been back and forth on it and uh, Steve had a proposal which uh, made sense. And maybe Steve, you could update us on where we stand. Are you there? 
did a few. You put him to sleep. I did. Oh. I did. <laughs> did we put you to sleep? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been kind of put on the back burner again because of construction season, but I think things are looking to stabilize a little bit in that aspect. So hopefully I can get back at it again and, um, you know, look at the letter that needs to go out to all the residents to inform them of the problem and that we would like to correct it and and go from there. But I, I've gone through and plotted all the new addresses, submitted them to the county. They did not have any uh, problems with them. Um, I mean, they even wanted to take it to the point of addressing the vacant properties, you know, and I, I basically responded to them that we would address those properties when, when we needed to, instead of trying to give them numbers now. Yeah. Well, the, isn't that a problem? I mean, isn't that a problem? I mean, unless you skip numbers you know, well, for well, different the, lots. The proposal was that basically we have a number for every 50 feet. Oh. Okay. Road. So this, when somebody right. okay. approaches us and says, I want to put right. in a house, yep. um, uh, Steve basically goes, but where does the driveway come out on the road? Right. No, and then, that makes sense. And then yeah. you, put the, you get the number based on that. This would be back and forth where it is. Right. You know, so, yeah. Um, and that was a proposal which uh, was run by uh, Caddy Ann. Uh, what's Caddy Ann's last name? Campbell. Caddy Ann Campbell. 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 Caddy Ann Campbell. Um, she's the county point person on this matter. And I think they're all on our board. I think we're at the point of the. Um, Caroline's okay with it too, right? And we're we just need to get a, uh, we're at the point of crafting a letter to send out. Correct. Yeah. So we'll get to send out to residents. Yeah. Thing. Uh, and we talked about which we have a meeting. I think, I think the, the consensus was really no need. Um, what we should do is tell the you know we're going to change it. Um, here's what your new numbers are. If you have any questions, let us know. The people, the people didn't know it was a mess. You know, the, the, the numbers are out of order, and then you, you know, yeah, it, it, it does one one side of the line is different than the other side. Yeah, it, it needs to be. It's better to make a clean sweep of it. Yeah, and make it and rectify the situation. Doing the census, I experienced that a lot. Yes, <laughs> terrible. And I also experienced why at every fifty feet there was a new address, but there was no resident like. Um, the cidery has two or three addresses mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was interesting. It is interesting. I think we picked one. <laughs> well, that's sort of the process. Hmm. Um, one that we need to, I think, follow up on is the community center. Um, because you know the, 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 the where is is like the first driver of everything else that follows, and um, it's still unclear to me whether or not the, the you know the, the land it was acquired is a, even a possibility for community center. Um, you recall that it was acquired specifically to put the community center there. Um, but then the the wetlands turned out to be a constraint, right. and the question is, are they an in, in, in insurmountable obstacle, or or so that we have to look someplace else, uh, or is it something that could be worked around? And that's a question for the Danby Community Park Association because they're the um, owners of the property. Well. There's two options. One, one is the problem of the wetlands that new technology might be. That's, but you're saying, well, I mean, it's it's mostly a constraint in terms of where you can develop because you right. can't infringe on the wetlands. And if there's enough wetlands, then you don't have any space left to do anything. Right. So that's the question. You know, is there is there space enough left to do something, or not? Because it was acquired for the purpose, but with the, the land closest to the main highway, which made the most sense, 
um, to exclude from the park parcel. So the rest of the, the, the rest of it is the park is park, it's designated parkland. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we have the, or we or they have the flexibility to use the parkland for community things. But the conversation could be had with the with them. Mm -hmm. The land that was set aside for the community center is, you know, if it's not usable, then we have to look elsewhere. Well, can the town send a letter to the park association and say, please put this on your agenda to discuss and get back to us? Can that happen? Yeah, we could. We, we don't have. We don't, I know, but it would be that formal. But we could probably ought to talk to Amanda about. You know, well, somebody needs to do it. In other words, and yeah. a letter was one way I was thinking of it. I'm yeah. not doing it without knowing better how to say it. Mm -hmm. so, I could. I could try to get. You know, the number of things I've been trying to get to for ages, like completing these contracts, and still haven't gotten it done. You mean with the park? The park or other yeah, well, even the park one, I have. I mean, it's all. It still, it still requires my signature and saying, "Good, we're good to go." And yeah. the board approved it right last time. It's still kind of done, but not because they don't want to. Right. Well, it doesn't have to be a formal letter. I mean, a fancy letter. It can be high park. Can you look at other places for the, a community center? Yeah, Please we, get back to us. Yeah. I mean, I can do that. It doesn't have to be fancy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and if, you, it, if it, it, it needs a form of delineation, you know, we can offer to pay for it um, in order to get to clarify whether what, how much land is there available. If, if we need a formal wetland delineation, you've got wetlands as designated on the map, but that's not um, definitive. What's definitive is if you have somebody with with expertise come in and delineate the boundaries, and then you know where the boundaries are. That isn't already done? I'm just curious. I don't think it was done formally. Ted might know. Do you know, Ted, whether that was done? I don't know about a formal delineation, but you, 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 you noted that um, the park is precluded from use of its property by outside parties. And I think you're correct about that. Um, the, I, think that the, I think that the area that was originally intended for a community center um, is in fact wetland. That's an I think. And yeah, some of it is. And, and part of the first thing that I said, you know, agreeing with you, um, means that it's not really clear how, uh, whether the town could, in fact, other than just giving a whole bunch of money to the park and letting the park build it, whether the town could build something there within the park, any part of the park. And you then would also have to, the real, the real bugaboo though, is not whether you could build it or where, but who's going to pay for the maintenance. And it, if, if what I heard repeated, and I'm, it wasn't this specific question, but if what I heard repeated was that, no, you can't use any part of the park to benefit any outside organization. I don't know how you would go about maintaining a place. It's Why not else? just building it, it's put, paying, it's making the, it work. Yeah, but the property owned by DCPA is in two, two designations. In fact, I mean, there's a part that's specifically designated park land, and then there's a, the area that was intended for the community center, which is the, the you know, the, the front 10 acres or whatever it is. Um, and they're, they're, they're not similarly constrained. The, the park parcel in the, mm -hmm. the back, back 70 or whatever it is, is constrained, I believe, but the, the 10 acres in the front was specifically left out of the park because it was intended for the, that, that was acquired specifically to put the community center there. Uh, and yeah, that, what you're saying sounds right, but I don't recall anything in current documents that delineates them separately. Uh, it's only one property. I, I know that there were there were I remember reading early documents I that uh, that confirm well, what you were saying, but not recent ones. 
That's yeah. you know, well, limited the knowledge. Clarification is wanted. <laughs> Because you know, because that property was acquired in, in a search for a place to put a community center, um, and 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 it ended up being a park only because they acquired a great deal more land than they needed for the purpose. And one way to fund it was to get it to make it a park. Um, we ended up with a park plus a place to put a community center. We thought, mm -hmm. but it ended up being maybe it can't serve as a community center because of the wetlands on the site. So anyway, that the, 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 the possibility of a community center being located on DCPA land, because the DCPA doesn't own all of it, um, needs to be ruled in or out so we can then decide you know, where to go next, because it's not there that way. Okay. And your suggestion of a letter posing that question makes, very, makes sense. So, um, So perhaps the next step then is to compose a letter and ask, right? Now I'm getting out of my understanding, but we can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. I'll see if I can't prioritize doing this. Well, and if the park doesn't own all of it, if it doesn't own the well, 10 D acres. DCPA no. owns everything. Okay. So they own the whole thing. The question is that, but, but part of it is, in my understanding, was designated parkland, and part of it was not. Right. Um, okay. So there's no question of ownership. They own it all. Okay. Okay. So that's the next step. Um, because other things to consider, consider, you know, in the next item, if, if not, um, seek alternate location, including the possibility of, you know, requiring property next door, yeah. um, you know, something central. You know, yeah, if, right if, if, ask, if, you know the, the next question is, if not there, then where? Okay. But you don't want to, I mean, I'd rather not ask the question. Um, I'd like to have the answer to the first part. You know, can it be there? Mm -hmm. If it can, then we can figure out how to make it happen. If, it, and if not, and then, the next, then the next question is, if not there, then where? Right. You know, Um, other items are related to that, like the, uh, yeah. the, the restrooms, restrooms and, and the pavilion. pavilion. If we were to move, if, if there was a possibility of a, of, a, of a community center being there, it could be done in stages and, and uh, complement the park activity. Um, for instance, adding restrooms to the park you know, in, a, in a location that would that would become part of or, or could be part of a community center, you know, would, would serve both purposes. Similarly, pavilion. Um, and then adding water, you know, there's a well there. In the park. Yeah, that's right. Um, the well was drilled in conjunction with the aquifer study um, with the thought that the, it could be used to serve as a park at some right. point. Right. So these are all related things, and in order to get off square one, we have to, you know, rule in or out right. whether it can happen there. And then some of these other things could happen, you know, but then other questions follow. But um, senior housing is something we haven't talked about in a while, but it's something Danby doesn't have, and that that, that has been. I think it's in the comprehensive plan. Certainly, it's come up before as something that would be nice to have someplace. And um, and and this is something that could be enabled or at least facilitated if we had some way of addressing the, sep the whole septic issue. Um, if we end up doing you know community sewering of some sort, um, it would make a lot of things possible. You know, somewhere in a central location. Right. Be a deep pocket person. <laughs> well, you know, we could, we could, we can um, position ourselves for Grant. funding if we have a plan. So that's the thing is, you know, we, first right. we need to decide, determine what are our, our objectives and what are the obstacles to get there. 
and then we can knock some of them down and then you know make it more likely that something can happen but well is this is this one of the kinds of things that could be um a community um committee or whatever work that work group that might be interested in that that could look into some of this and maybe and get some community involvement and in making uh, come up with some sort of plans that would be a foundation for mm -hmm. this. some group to look at how other towns right kind of yeah yeah um, well I, I you've been around long enough you know at one point uh, um I forget his first name Franzen huh I forget his, his first name, but uh, where Branson, um, who, who was doing senior developments, and he did one in Newfield, um, approached Danby about doing one in Danby. Um, this is a good long time ago at this point. Huh. Um, and it didn't come to pass, and I don't remember why, but um, uh, I don't remember whether because he decided it was going to be too expensive because of whatever. Um, but that's how it happened in those other places because he was doing it at the time. Right. He did, I think he did one in Candor too. Um, you know, they have a senior complex there too. I'm pretty sure he did Candor and he did Newfield, uh, multi apartment right. buildings. Well, might be worth checking out how, how, yeah. how other towns, small towns, uh, without. I'm not sure they can hear you. Closely. It might be worth having somebody check out. How other small towns have been able to do it? Yeah, obviously they had somebody who had the money and was the interest in doing something like that. Uh, so maybe we just need to get on a list somewhere. <laughs> I don't well, know. you know, it's, it's a form of housing development. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, we, there's probably grant money that could be brought to bear there. If we, it was a really high priority, we could we could. You know, use ARPA money for something like that too. But we'd have to have we have to have a a proposed location, and we have to have the infrastructure to support it. Well, some part of it, okay. some part of its infrastructure is the people in Danby, and so I don't think that many people even know we even talk about this because you have to come to meetings and you, and to know that we even talk about this and we have one new we have one person here tonight mm -hmm. um and a few people in the audience but maybe this is a, you know a, a general article that talks about the wish list mm -hmm. that says the kinds of things that have been on a list for a long time might engender some somebody that we don't even know lives in Danby who says well I know all about that kind of stuff. They just did it in the place where I was. I mean, so I'm thinking of um, mm -hmm. some article, something that could be in the in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time since I, I think any any senior housing has been built. Well, that's not true. They they, they did a project in downtown Ithaca. There's sewer and set, you know. There's there's. Yeah, they got I want to know yeah. how little towns yeah. like. I'm just, thinking, I'm just thinking in, in the outlying towns, I'm not aware of any senior housing specifically in, in, in quite some time. Well, we, we already have in the code, I mean, in the zoning that we can have smaller, close together houses yeah. in the core. So yeah. we can start with small the idea of something like small. that. Yeah, two you duplexes know, or something. Yeah, yeah fourplex. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's already, so I mean, I think that if people knew that's where you get some, you know, there might be somebody with good ideas and ability. Yeah. So I'm suggesting that we have an article on, um, or at least a list that, a dandy wish list that's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yeah. Anybody interested? Anyway, that's all I can say about that. It's a nicer what thing than looking at. to add to the list. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that some of this discussion will be precipitated when we, when we, when the, uh, the um, septic study yeah. comes yeah. out and we'll talk about it um, because it, 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 it will, if we had, um, sewers 
it would enable a lot of things that otherwise right. are difficult. That's to right. Do. Right. Yeah. Including the town hall. I mean, a town uh, community, community center. Community center. Yeah. 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 Community center so, and, and, and higher density, yeah. in particular on on this side of the highway, um, because of the proximity of the creek. So the setback for septic systems puts them into rural projects practically. And um, you know, it'd be nice if they had if we if we had a door instead. Yeah, it would enable a lot of. Um, so you know, that's going to be a, an interesting discussion: is how much are we willing to to uh, do, and and what are willing, people willing to buy into? And, and and that in turn will depend in part on you know, how much uh, we can get grant support for doing it. So I look forward to that discussion. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Coming soon. All right. I'm 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 going to suggest that we we, we stop at that point and come back to this. Again. Yeah, I agree. But uh, well, action items came out of that. Uh, let's see what's up next. Oh yeah, progress report. And are there any updates on the noise and short-term rental? Did you ask? That? Did you ask about two things? Noise yes, noise and short-term rental. Whether there's there's. Anything. I can say briefly, briefly that sure. I am thrilled with the the way the noise work group is communicating. Mm -hmm. I'm thrilled with it. So there will be. Um, it's been a wonderful experience, and uh, we're making progress that that I think is acceptable and and welcomed by all participants in that group, which includes all the views. Um, I mean, there's lots of people at Danby, but I think the views are pretty well represented. And um, that's just the beginning. And then the idea of having more meetings, bigger meetings, but um, that's down the road. But I would say it's pretty good. Progress is being made. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. And what, what's short term rental group in the well, scheme of things? Dave, I mean, um, Dave and Steve and I met. I not Dave has anything he wants to say. Would you like to comment, David, on where we are in short term rental? Coming, yeah. <laughs> I hear him coming up to you. <laughs> hey, keep the noise down. <laughs> Not illegal yet. <laughs> um, yeah, we, Steve and Leslie and I met. We made a short list of things to include in a draft law that I either have drafted for you in the next couple of weeks, or we'll have a memo about what needs to go in it if I if it's not something I can get to. But I the general thinking was to keep it quite simple. Um, I think we reported on it last meeting. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have any updates on beyond that. I can't remember where you reported. Was it at the meeting or was it in the in your article? I, mean, I wasn't both. here for the meeting so yeah. maybe it was at the meeting. I think Probably I was. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Next step will be having a proposed local law that we can we can run by folks and consider. Yeah. It sounds like real progress to me. Yeah. 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 Keeping it simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, cat. Pat's process for uh, suggested process for for appointing a town clerk is something we reviewed last time, and um, I don't think, as a result of the discussion, there were any real changes to it. Do you remember? Yes, there was. There were suggestions that it be five or seven instead of five, um, and I was looking at between five and seven um, members. Seven members. members. Mm -hmm. Um, and I sent an email out saying that mm -hmm. the members uh, wanted to clarify. So I don't think I worded it quite carefully enough. One of the positions would be, um, <clears throat> I said staff position, but I'd say people who work in the town hall, one one person from there and they can, mm -hmm. as opposed to staff, because it's not clear what staff means. So I want to make mm -hmm. sure it's from somebody who works regularly in the town. Yeah. 
uh, the rest would be three. You consider one person from the town, three people from the town, one of whom I would suggest should be um, <clears throat> a previous town board member. And the easiest way to make that, instead of making it totally random, pick somebody, uh, pick, pick a list, and then you go down that list. The list can be based on Otherwise, you could do it on the longest terming, longest term, whoever served the longest time, and you go down that list. In terms of former town board member, well, yeah, former town board, town board, board, board member. There's already a position for a former town board. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or former town clerk or deputy clerk, not just. Assuming it has to be a long time. Is it necessarily a court? Where's 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 it mentioned the board former, or is that an addition? That's an addition. Okay. Because now the addition would be instead of three members. You're talking about one, three, one of whom would be a pre previous town board member, and pick some category to base it on. Mm -hmm. So, so you're saying it would be three town board members? No, 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 no. Three town members. <laughs> members of the town. He's Residents, working off the old list. He's uh -huh. working off the old list. So he passed the new. Same that Mr. Three. Three. Uh -huh. That's all they have to work with. Well, no, she said that it was out. It came in 11. Well, this afternoon. This morning. Morning. Yeah. I missed it. <laughs> this morning? Yep. Okay. Or early afternoon. Later. So three town residents. Mm -hmm. so seven members total. Mm -hmm. Become a staff member, of which you mean somebody who actually worked in the town hall, mm -hmm. which is to say, um, who would that be? Would it include the library person or? Could, um, no. Staff code and uh, code. It would include code and planner. It would include the uh, justices and the clerk and deputy clerks. Current deputy clerks. Historian, mm -hmm. maybe. I mean, it is the, all the. Historic, what? Yeah, historian. The great right, the, 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 the records. Um, what do you call it? So? Yeah. Records. Not, not, not the historian as such, but the, right. in the other capacity, which is part of records management. Right. Yeah. Just thinking of people be... working the town hall right yeah. now. The, the one thing I, I wonder about is um, not including their supervisor. That's somebody who has to work pretty closely with the clerk. The decision is made. The decision is made by the town board. This group uh, recommends to the town board with uh, with uh, with justifications and reasons, and that would include one member of the town board as an ex officio member, i.e., as a just like we have people ex officio on the planning board mm -hmm. and all those other boards, and that can be any member. So this board, this committee recommends to the town board. The town board then chooses. This, that means the final decision is not made by this committee or anybody on this. No, committee. sure. But I mean, I... vice president or something, you would think you would want the president to have somebody to say about, you know, is this somebody you can work with? And that can be done at the town board level. The town board then can do an evaluation of that um, afterwards. And I'm assuming that the town board would have access to all of the paperwork, including all of the resumes and all of the references. So the, the thrust of it is that uh, you would have mostly uh, Well, they, they mostly see the outsider eyes, so to speak, without a, without a, like an internal bias. Yes. Mostly, yeah. yeah. But also, it's uh, uh, it's also to make sure the process has some people who would have uh, direct involvement. 
not being a final decision making yeah. position. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could, it would make more sense to me to have the supervisor than to have the judge. You know, that, that's what's yeah. in the back of my mind right now. But that's a different, that's a different category. Mm -hmm. That category is somebody working in a town hall, <clears throat> regularly working and knows what goes on in the town hall. Really, none of the board members do because we're not sitting here all the time. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure any of us. Most idea is to get expert, as much expert advice, external expert advice as you can get into the process that goes in. And I want to say that that's exactly what they did for the town, for the uh, principals of the schools. The principal of the school of the yeah, no, middle not, school not, not, is is the yeah. decisions made by the board. It is yeah. not made by the committee. But the committee consisted of as wide a range of people that are involved as possible. Mm -hmm. And the chairman of the board was not on the committee. Board members were not on the committee, but they did have an interface. And when I did the president of SUNY Binghamton, which is a very important position, mm -hmm. the um, president of the board was that made the decision was not on the committee. There was, there was no board members on the committee. They did have an interface. So somebody would know what was going on and can respond to questions, but he was not a voting member. Mm -hmm. So it's a procedure that's been used, I know, in two of other places. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would make sense. That, it, makes me, it, it makes sense if you're picking a CEO um, mm -hmm. to do it that way, but we're, we're, we're not doing it. It's not, it's not, analog, it's not perfectly analogous. Uh, we're picking somebody that the supervisor needs to work closely with. And in fact, if it ends up being an appointed position, would we'll probably be the supervisor of. Right. Is the um is the finance person on there? Um. Yeah, town accountant. Hmm? Laura, town accountant. T town accountant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's important. Yeah. But I think also one thing is clear. Um, if you want to say that the supervisor should be on there because the supervisor worked closely, it's not the current supervisor, it's all supervisors, True. which means we need more than one person's opinion about how they would work well. We need uh, a much broader circle. And if that's the case, then what they do is need a broad information that then gives uh, advice to the town board. Nothing is taken away from the town board's decision. I'm not. I'm not sold on the plan yet myself, but that I I, I didn't think we were going to. Are we trying to finalize this plan? Not necessarily, but um, you know, we want to. We want to have a pretty firm idea so that when we um, uh, well after we decide whether we're not going to propose changing from elected to appointed, we can tell people here's what we'll here's how we'll do it if, right. if it gets approved. That I think is important. Yeah. So I just I just think it's a little strange not including supervisor at home. Oh, I, I understand that it seems a little strange to me, but I don't have strong horse and I don't have strong opinion right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I mean probably, I work with anybody, but it's kind of but it's kind of like, you know, saying we're gonna hire the person who's gonna work for you. <laughs> It's like what? Well, that person doesn't just work with the supervisor no. or just work with the accountant or the right. Or the, but neither does the planner or the code officer. Or, you know, that, that wouldn't be. Right. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I wouldn't hire. I would object if I went included in the hiring process for a planner either. No. Well, or the code officer. I mean, most. In you know, most towns, they probably would defer to the supervisor to, to you know nominate and then have the board confirm. Well, one of, one of the things that I wasn't prepared to talk about this, but I'll say a few things. One of them is that when we were talking about uh, workplace violence, um, we also had the same sort of situation where it seemed logical to have somebody on it, but when whoever it is that, the, that 
is going to be complained about shouldn't be the person who's in the <laughs> highest position to do something. Yeah, or, yeah. And it could be uh, our, the perception of, of our thinking about this has been very skewed by a lot of opinions. And it's very unfortunate that it's the same thing that's happened with the, to use some of these words, noise. Um, and what we're ending up with is um, as the word that Ted used earlier, public relations. And so I don't, I think that we shouldn't be doing this in terms of what's popular or what's public relations, what makes people happy. It should be something that, um, you know, anybody who, if it becomes, if we were to, and frankly, I understand the idea, I really understand the idea of changing to appointed and that allows anybody to, to apply for a job, which I think is a much, I think that's desirable one. Anybody can apply for that job sure. and then they come with qualifications and et cetera, et cetera. So unfortunately it looks like it's because of our current unhappiness that everybody walks around, tiptoes around, doesn't want to talk about, but we do, we are, it does come up, but, um, so everything that we do is being scrutinized even amongst us as to why why would anybody why would i pick leslie to be on that why because she you know why would i pick out why would i would i pick me to do anything and so i think for a committee like this i think the steve's Steve's input was because of the school board, but that it's not the only example of a search of, of a appointment committee. And maybe a few other um, ideas can come. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing right now is that it's such an unpopular idea that we it would be it would be good if we could <clears throat> help each other and help the town understand and the clerk and the you know, the current clerk, all, anybody who, to me, it's way more fair to, to for people to be able to apply for this job. Well, I agree. Um, it, and I guess, um, I mean, as the point has been made, where well, we didn't do all that great a job when we appointed Janice, because uh, she was appointed initially. I know. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the process was at the time. Do you remember, Lizzie? I mean, we interviewed, we were there were only two, essentially two. I can tell you since I was there two, involved. In that. There were three people and <laughs> one person true. dropped out. Yeah. Um, so there were interviews. Yeah, right. Janet, you, you could probably remember what the process was better than I can. I do. I do remember it. Um, you posted it on the website and it was announced elsewhere, I believe, um, probably through TED. And I submitted a cover letter and a resume, and you invited me to be interviewed by the board. And there were three people, like Leslie said, who were invited to be interviewed, and we all were interviewed except for the third person. And then you made a decision that night. Okay, right. That sounds right. That's what I said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So. So I was the principal in that process at the time. Um, I basically sold the job as as, as a, you know information central, which I think really is how, how the clerk position should be seen. You're a key key person in the organization. I, I actually prefer using the the proper term if we're gonna if the yeah, person's a sure. town clerk, I think they should be called town clerk. And I don't oh, think sure. I'm not I don't think we should budget book it as some other kind of yeah, no, no. It's definitely the, the title is town clerk. But, right. But the but the, the role of the clerk is 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 is, is central that's, to that's information. one of your views of what that is. Yeah, I mean it was it was a it was a, I think a shared pretty much a shared opinion of the board at the time as well. Well, anyway, yeah. at any rate, it's um, not it could relevant. certainly be said that, um, look how that worked out. Um, well, you know, for, for the record, um, the internet keeps um, dropping out in the town meeting room, I believe. Does it? Yeah, it's been freezing. 
Perhaps. Ted, have you been know. asking that too? There are unaccountable pauses, yes. Clock. It might it's be been two hours. Yes, it has. So are we, are we had yeah? no two more. Couple more things. So we need a motion to extend the meeting by a little bit. No more than fifteen. I was going to say ten. ten. I was going to say ten also. Okay. okay, ten minutes. So is the motion to extend the meeting to ten more minutes? Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, ready to go. Yes. 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 Honors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Worth. Yes. And you. Yes. Okay. The two more things are. Uh, Before you go on, one. for the benefit of those of us who don't have your lists, could you enumerate the seven members again? Uh -huh. We never mentioned all seven at one time. <laughs> The list was on last time. The only change was the one town resident goes to three town residents. Otherwise, it's identical to the last time. The members are town accountant, one staff member working at the town hall chosen by all such staff, one previous town clerk or deputy clerk chosen by the town board, Thompson County clerk or other town clerk or deputy town clerk recommended by the county clerk, three town residents, one of whom will be a prior member of the board setting up some criteria. And what about the All three right. town board members? Joel. That's it, it's, 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 we, don't, we don't have time to further discuss it because we're constrained by our time. We need we to schedule a public hearing. Yes, well, what is the software price quote? Um, we already that was the other one. Yeah. The, public the public hearing is quicker, I think. We already mm -hmm. scheduled it. Hmm? We already scheduled it. Well, but this one is a new more. thing. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Oh, that public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> um, could, you <laughs> tell, could, you tell, could you tell us what this public hearing is? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a public hearing on what will be a draft CDBG application for multifamily rehab. Oh, cool. Um, for the next meeting. Okay, yes. I was just <laughs> I move we set up that public hearing for the next meeting. Whatever you said. Second. Yeah, for, yeah. Well, family, right? Yeah. Yes. We have. Um, and you would think discussion about that? Um, Sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the only, the only thing, problem I could see is that we don't have very many multi family. Sounds like a good idea for a house being turned into some senior housing community. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay. Depends how old the residents we can, are. If we can make it work, I'm, I'm all for it. Then. So, um, are we ready to vote? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when do you actually schedule the public hearing? For next meeting. Next meeting. So it'll be, you know, Excellent. along with the other two that are already scheduled. So you want to have three public hearings next meeting? Correct. Yep. Okay. So we're ready for the vote. All right. Connors. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Daniel. Yes. Okay. And any other item is what? What is it about software pipe close the firewall and office 365? That that came in. I, I didn't see it till just now either, but I did look it up. Um, and there's two prices on that. One is the the firewall, and and Janice um, earlier earlier I responded to uh, Marianne's question about equipment. And I got a telephone call from Kobe from TCNS, mm -hmm. and then uh, I <clears throat> then I wasn't. He left a message, and he got in touch with Janice. So regarding these, and so you, did you talk to him, Janice, about the firewall and the Office three sixty five? No. So the firewall and the switch for Jack had been presented. You sent them around, I believe. Um, oh, month ago, maybe several oh. weeks ago. 
um, and I don't think anything happened with them. Um, Drew sent around sent the Office 365 quote to uh, was it today? No, it was Mon Monday. I think it was Monday. Um, knowing that everybody is eagerly awaiting the switch. Uh, so he got that quote sent out for us. And since everyone is eagerly awaiting the software switch, um, I figured you would need to act on it. Uh, the, I mean, that's all I can say. I know the firewall is something that they are keen to get going. Um, I believe it was, um, yeah, he said, uh, can you get the firewall quote in front of them? We want to connect both locations with a VPN and get the guest and staff wireless properly configured. They can't do it in the current setup. So that's why the firewall and then the Office 365 speaks for itself. Office 365 what? Speaks for itself. Oh, yes. Where's the switch? I don't see anything. I, don't see anything. I did not include the switch. Um, because I didn't know if it was high priority or not. So it is actually not in the, the third quote would be the switch. If you want, I can pull that up as well. Well, we haven't seen that, so we can't do anything about it. Well, Catherine sent it around before. Catherine has sent these, the at least the firewall and the switch quote before. What? Sorry, I, I'm having, I, it's hard for me to understand you. So let me see if I can, wh what was the last thing you said that the firewall? I said I that, not, yeah. Sorry. Okay. You have it? You said what? I had it on my internet. I mean, do you see it? Is it on there? Disappear. You know, when? Just asking the stuff about the firewall. What? When did it disappear? It's about so, four o'clock. Yeah. Don't you think so, it's you know, have a little time to look yes. at something and then just fill up before we're going to dissolve seven? Yes. What do you do about it? On yeah. May 31st, Catherine sent an email, May 31st, with now two gotcha. quotes. Two quotes on May 31st. That's over five weeks ago with a firewall quote and a switch for Jack. Yes. A switch for Jack? That, yes. I don't know what the switch for Jack is. It's I don't I you would have to ask them. No idea. But the firewall is necessary for the cyber insurance, which is necessary for the security, which is necessary for peace of mind, which is necessary for whatever else you want to throw out there. The Office 365 is to upgrade, transfer, migrate, get everybody off of the horrid. Godforsaken Zoho platform that's just been, you yeah, know. know about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those are the stories behind the two quotes. Right. Thank you, Janice. I'm sorry I couldn't understand. And I and um, Leslie just handed me the copy of the letter that I sent around on May 31st, and it has both of these figures in it. Oh wait, no, it doesn't have them in it. But um, we had we, we knew this was coming. We didn't have right. a price tag associated with it. Uh, I don't see the office. Yeah, the office we wouldn't have had this because the that was the, the fire law. But we knew we were anticipating that also. Right. It but the office. Yeah. The office. There is a figure. Um, One hundred and fifty dollars for the switch for Jack. That's in this letter I sent out right. in May. Yeah. Um, and the other for 3200 for the firewall and that is right. right where we are slightly under that we're at 3196 basically 3200 mm -hmm. um the switch is not listed today because as janice just said if it wasn't if it weren't um priority but it's 150 dollars yeah. yeah um the other, the Office 365, we didn't have the prices before because we didn't know what there's three, 52 users and that price is 286 um, per month. Per, and month. Per month. Right, because it's it's a the license and yeah. and users for 52. We're up to, up to. Yeah. So uh, it, it isn't new. And we do need well, to. I knew it was, com knew it was coming. We didn't have the numbers. We did have the numbers. We That's did. what I just kind of showed you. The, the office one? 
right. the office was. Yeah. Yeah. But the other the things. Were, yeah, right. We didn't yep, have the yep, quantity were, for yeah. office. Yeah, right. yeah. The firewall is something we expected. Right. Yeah. Well, and office I, we expected. Office is something we expected. Yeah. It didn't have the numbers. Well, we, we didn't, didn't have the number of users, but we didn't have, we had the rest. Yeah. And, and we also have been um, preparing for that number. <clears throat> I think there were a couple of times in the meetings when it's been discussed. I, I will say that. So, so what are we actually contemplating doing here? You're authorizing? Authorizing this. Yeah. Because right. it is part of what we plan to do. Yeah. Right. It, and it, isn't it in effect already authorized? Yeah. So it, it, all it needs is a signature. So you're authorizing me to sign it. If right. you'll sign it, yeah. that would be really good. And right now it has Janice's it's signature. Like it's planned. Yeah, it's yeah. planned, et cetera. Yeah, so it right. needs to be signed. And yeah. we have um, paper copy right there too, or you can do an electronic signature. If you have paper copy, you can do it right now. Okay. That's that. So you want to you want to authorize him to sign it? Or? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Authorize Joel to sign the uh, two contracts in Triple Cities. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Second, I'll second it. Okay. And thank you, Janice, for helping bring that paper back. Right. So uh, the vote, please. Is that it? Do you have it back? Hmm? That's your Honest. Yeah. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Woodworth. Yes. Canyon. Yes. And to be clear, this was just for firewall and Office 365, or did you also include the switch for Jack? Yeah. I would. Yeah. 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 We don't have the yeah. paper for it, but I'm happy to sign it when we get it. It's on the thing. I mean, it's, it's on the thing. I thought it was on the same. It's on the I, I didn't get it when I when I downloaded it. Didn't when I didn't get it. Anyway, it's included. Yeah. Okay. Now, complete the agenda. And we're at 10 minutes. Yep. Well, we can adjourn. We didn't discuss the next meeting agenda, but it's pretty well spelled out already. Right. What's going to be for the next meeting? Yeah. A lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah. It's just the one for Jack. <laughs> Is it there? Night, everybody. Yeah. What'd you say? Night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Oh, thank you for coming.